This is International Master Eric Kislik, and today I'll be talking about the Grob. The Grob is a dubious opening for White. I'll be explaining why. For whatever reason, the actual refutation of this opening I never saw until I looked into a correspondence database and I actually looked over the high-level correspondence games and saw just how poorly White was scoring. And after a while, it became completely clear to me just why it was so bad. So it's important to understand what the problem is with the Grob. I mean, the fundamental problem in the opening is that basically almost every single main opening tries to occupy the center. For example, e4, normally when people play e4 on move one or d4 on move one, they're trying to occupy the center with pawns. So for example, if you play e4, generally you're trying to play d4 on the next move. And that's often why black plays moves like e5 to challenge that or c5 to challenge that. Or they might play a move like e6 with the idea of d5 to challenge d4 once it arrives or c6 to challenge d4 once it arrives. So that explains the main moves against e4, which are e5, e6, c5, and c6. But when we actually look at the grob, the grob is just a much weaker version of g3 because the pawn's undefended on g4. Another problem with it is that g4 weakens the squares h4 and f4, which matters a lot in the middle game that comes up after this. Another problem is that white has to spend a lot of time in the main line capturing the b7 pawn because he starts off down a pawn. So black goes d5, immediately targeting the pawn on g4. And um, everybody plays bishop g2 here. This is the whole point of the grob. He's trying to get activity. He's trying to play c4 on the next move to try to lengthen his g2 bishop's diagonal. So we simply take the pawn. White goes c4. And what I'm going to do is just hold on to the d5 pawn, make it a very strong pawn. So I go c6, and he goes queen b3. And now, uh, let me just check what the score is here. I only, I only see one correspondence game here, but black goes e6. And this is actually very, very strong. The, the point is, the d5 pawn is a much more important pawn than the b7 pawn. If we can just be really solid in the center, we'll have not only a lead in development, but we'll also have a better pawn structure and better position in the center. So black takes the b7 pawn, but the important factor here is that he's just wasted two tempi and a tempo in chess is worth a quarter of a pawn. By spending two tempi to regain the lost pawn, white's lost at least half a pawn in value in his position. So black plays knight to d7, defending the rook on a8. And the problem is white's going to have to waste time moving his queen very soon, and black's lead in development is just going to increase. So he could go queen takes c6, but then we have rook c8 regaining the pawn on c4. For example, queen to a6, rook takes c4, knight a3, and I'll just retreat the rook, rook to c8. And here, if he attacks my bishop, I'll just go back, knight f3, knight e7. Essentially, my plan of development is to play knight f5 and then to play bishop c5. And black even has a hard time getting basic development completed. So, for example, knight b5, threatening mate in one with knight to d6, I go knight f5, castle. Bishop to c5, and I just play in a castle and attack white's weaknesses. One of his problems is he can't even go d4, because then I can go bishop takes f3 and take the d4 pawn if I want to. So going back after knight to c3, which is the main move, black just goes simply knight e7. So I'm just defending the c6 pawn, and now my threat is to go knight to c5. Knight c to, to go knight c5, attacking the queen. So I would go knight c5, then when the queen goes back, I go knight f5, and then I have the threat of knight d3 going after the queen here. So knight e7 has a pretty direct threat to it. So he goes c takes d5, which is the best move. Actually, an interesting move the computer suggested here is playing rook to b8. And the idea is that, yes, we give up the pawn, but we get a very big lead in development. So if he goes here attacking my bishop, I back up, bishop h5, knight f3, knight to g6. So here I can just develop very quickly with black, for example, bishop d6 and castles. And I get to probe against his weaknesses here, so he's going to have a hard time even getting his development completed here. So actually, when I checked this with the computer, this had a score of about minus one point, almost one and a half pawn advantage for black at pretty high evaluation. I mean, pretty high depth. It was like depth 35. So this was pretty convincing for black, almost winning for black pretty much already on move seven, which doesn't happen in any of the main openings. So this gives you an idea of how bad the grob is against correct defense. So actually, I really like the move e takes d5 here 
And my idea is if d4, I'll go rook to b8. And my point here is that if he goes queen takes a5, I'll just go knight to f5. And my idea is to go rook a8 next. And the problem is he, he's, his queen is in such a bad position that if I go rook a8, I'll be able to take the d4 pawn on the next move and then go after the c2 square. So queen a6 is the best move. So he tries to consolidate by going queen d3. I go knight g6, and now I have an idea of playing bishop d6, kind of eyeing not only the f4 square, but I am keeping an eye on h4 square. Knight h4 is a common idea. So if h3, I can just go back with bishop e6. If knight f3, I go knight f6, completing my development. I'm, I'm very close to completing my development here. After knight a4, you can go rook b5. That's a solid move. I like the simple rook to b8, knight c5. Okay, I'll just keep my bishop now. I'll go bishop c8. The problem here for black, I mean for, for white, is that black is so fast with everything. He even has ideas of, let's say, you know, in, in this variation after, after h4, h5, queen c2, I can even go knight g4. So the problem is white doesn't even know what pawn can I even move without creating more and more weaknesses. It's very hard to even find a move. So after queen c3, I have knight e4. Of course, he can't play knight takes e4 because of bishop b4 with the, the pin to the queen. So, of course, he can't allow, can't allow this. So, he has quite some problems here. So, if queen e3, I'll simply take it, and then I'll castle. And white will almost definitely lose his c5 pawn for no compensation after queen a5 or queen to e7. So, I think the grob is a perfect example of why we need to fundamentally play logical chess. In the opening, there are a couple of main things we're trying to do. One of them is control the center. And when you play g4, so not only do you create some weaknesses, but you're forced to spend a lot of tempi trying to win back that pawn on b7. And so it, with the time lost, black not only gets a better pawn structure, but he also gets a lead in development. But all of this essentially happens for free. He's not taking any risk. He's simply getting a better pawn structure, getting a lead in development. And white has a hard time even getting his basic development completed. So it's very, very important to think about dubious or bad openings when you play them. Sometimes a dubious opening can be quite playable, but when it comes to the grob, I think it belongs in the garbage bin. Thanks a lot, and consider subscribing.